chapters 106 through 115 of the Acts of John, from the Apocryphal Acts of Paul, Peter, John, Andrew, and Thomas by Bernard Pick. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The End of John, Chapter 106 On the following day, which was the Lord's Day, and in the presence of the brethren, he began to say to them, Brethren, fellow servants, co-heirs and co-partners of the kingdom of the Lord, ye know the Lord, how many powers he hath given you through me, how many miracles, what cures, signs, what gifts, teachings, rulings, rests, services, knowledge, glories, graces, gifts, faiths, communions, all gifts that you have seen with your eyes, were given you by him, as they cannot be seen with these eyes, and cannot be heard with these ears. Be strong, therefore, in him, remembering him in all your doings, knowing the mystery of the dispensation that has come to men, for the sake of which the Lord hath worked. He then, through me, exhorts you, since he wishes to remain without grief, without insult, without treachery, without punishment. For he also knows insult from you. He knows also dishonor, treachery, and punishment, if you disobey his commandments. Chapter 107 Let not, therefore, our good God be grieved, the compassionate, the merciful, the holy, the undefiled, the incorporeal, the only, the one, the immutable, the sincere, the guileless, the slow to anger. He that is higher and more exalted than every name that we speak or think of, our God, Jesus Christ. Let him rejoice along with us, because we live in purity. Let him rest, because we behave reverently. Let him be unconcerned, because we are temperate. Let him be pleased, because we live in fellowship. Let him smile, because we are sober-minded. And let him be delighted, because we love him. These things, brethren, I communicate to you, pressing on to the work set before me, already perfected for me by the Lord. For what else have I to say to you? You have the sureties of our God. You have the pledges of his goodness. You have his sure presence. And if ye then sin no more, he will forgive you what you have done in ignorance. But if, after ye have known him, and he has had compassion upon you, you return to the like courses, even your former offenses will be laid to your charge, and ye shall have no portion in him or compassion before his face. Chapter 108 and when he had said this to them, he thus prayed, Jesus, who didst wreath this crown by thy twining, who hast inserted these many flowers into the everlasting flower of thy countenance, who hast sown these words into my soul, who art the only forester and physician of thy servants, who healest freely, who art benignant and not haughty, alone merciful and kind, alone a saviour and just. Thou who always seest what concerns all, and art all, and everywhere present, comprising all and replenishing all, Christ, Jesus God, Lord, who with thy gifts and thy compassion protects those that hope in thee, who knowest intimately all the cunnings and threats by which our adversary follows us everywhere. Do thou alone, O Lord, help thy servants with thy watchful care. So be it, Lord. Chapter 109 And having asked bread, he gave thanks thus, saying, 
what praise or what sort of offering or what thanksgiving shall we breaking the bread invoke but the only lord jesus we glorify the name of the father called by thee we glorify the name of the son called through thee we glorify thy resurrection manifested to us through thee we glorify thy way we glorify thy seed the word the grace the faith the salt the unspeakable pearl the treasure the plough the net the greatness the diadem him called son of man for our sakes who has given us the truth the rest the knowledge the power the commandment the trust the hope the love the freedom and the place of refuge in thee for thou alone o lord art the root of immortality and the fountain of incorruption and the seat of the ages thou who hast been called all these names for our sakes that now we calling upon thee through these may recognize thy greatness which we cannot really see in the present but only when we are pure and solely in the image of the man belonging to thee chapter 110 and having broken the bread he gave it to us praying for each of the brethren that he might become worthy of the grace of the lord and his most holy eucharist he also therefore having likewise tasted it said to me also let there be a portion with you and grace be with you chapter 111 and he said to berus take two brethren with baskets and vessels with thee and follow me and berus did immediately what john the servant of god had bidden him and the blessed john having gone forth from the house went outside of the gates having told the multitude to stand off from him and having come to the tomb of one of our brethren he told to the young men dig children and they dug and he said to them let the trench be deeper and as they dug he preached to them the word of god and exhorted those who had come out of the house with him building them up and furnishing them thoroughly into the majesty of god and praying for each one of us and when the young men had finished the trench as he had wished while we knew nothing he takes off the clothes he had on and throws them as if they were some bedding into the depths of the trench and standing in only his drawers stretched forth his hands and prayed thus chapter 112 o god who hast chosen us for the apostleship among the gentiles who hast sent us into this world who hast declared thyself through the law and the prophets who hast never rested but always savest from the foundation of the world those who can be saved who hast made thyself known through all nature even among the animals who hast made the lonely and wild soul quiet and peaceable who hast given thyself to it when thirsting after thy words who didst quickly show thyself to it when about to die and didst appear as law when sinking into lawlessness who didst manifest thyself to it when overcome by satan who didst overcome its adversary when it took refuge in thee who hast given it thy hand and raised it from the kingdom of hades who didst not leave it in the body who hast shown it its own enemy who hast given it a pure knowledge concerning thee god jesus father of the supernatural ruler of the heavenly law of things ethereal the course of things aerial guardian of those on earth and fear of those under the earth and grace of thine own people 
receive also the soul of thy john which is certainly deemed worthy of thee chapter one hundred thirteen thou who hast preserved me also till the present hour pure to thyself and free from intercourse with a woman who when i inclined in my youth to marry didst appear to me and say i am in need of thee john who didst prepare for me beforehand my bodily weakness who in the third place when i wished to marry didst prevent me at once but didst say to me at the third hour in the sea john if thou wert not mine i would let thee marry who for two years madest my eyesight weak didst make men mourn and dependent on thee who in the third year hast opened up the spiritual eyes and favoured my visible eyes who by thy representations didst make the steady gaze upon a woman hateful to me who didst deliver me from temporary show and didst become my leader to eternal life who didst separate me from the filthy madness of the flesh who didst wrest me from bitter death and alone didst bring me to thee who didst stop up the secret disease of the soul and cut out its open sections who didst afflict and banish him who rebelled in me who didst establish a spotless friendship to thee who didst prepare a safe way to thee who didst give me undoubting faith in thee who hast drawn out for me pure thoughts toward thee who hast given the due reward to every deed who hast set it in my soul to have no other possession than thee alone for what can be more precious than thou now since i have accomplished thy stewardship with which i was entrusted make me worthy o lord of thy repose and give me the end in thee which is the unspeakable and ineffable salvation chapter one hundred fourteen and as i go to thee let the fire withdraw let darkness be overcome let the gulf be powerless let the furnace be slackened let hell be extinguished let the evil angels get behind me let the demons be afraid let the princes be broken in pieces let the powers of darkness fall let the devil be brought to silence let satan be laughed to scorn let his madness be tamed let his wrath be broken let his vengeance behave itself unseemly let his attack suffer sorrow let his children be trodden under foot and let all his root be uprooted and grant to me to accomplish my journey to thee without suffering insults and abuses and let me receive what thou hast promised to those that live in purity and love thee only chapter one hundred fifteen and having sealed and crossed himself altogether he stood and said be thou with me lord jesus christ he laid down in the grave in which he had spread out his garments he then said to us peace be with you brethren and peacefully yielded up the ghost note in tischendorf's text the last section reads as follows and gazing towards heaven he glorified god and having sealed himself altogether he stood and said to us peace and grace be with you brethren and sent the brethren away and when they went on the morrow they did not find him but his sandals and a fountain welling up and after that they remembered what had been said to peter by the lord about him 
for what does it concern thee if i should wish to remain until i come and they glorified god for the miracle that had happened and having thus believed they retired praising and blessing the benignant god because to him is due glory now and ever and to ages of ages amen End note End of Acts of John chapters one hundred six through one hundred fifteen